Welcome back to Dylan with Sid Meier's Colonization, where we continue the colonization of the Americas as the French. Actually, I'll assign him to the carpentry shop. We don't have enough cotton on hand to make it worthwhile to have him work for a turn at the shop. Mm-hmm, <laughs> the Iroquois looking a little bit angry right here. Not very happy indeed. They're pleased to see the prosperity of our neighbors, the French, but they're concerned that we're beginning to overuse the lands near their settlements. Uh, yeah, there's something else coming for you, my friend. Let's go ahead and take these colonists back to the New World. And a commentator actually informed me of something pretty important. We got a carpenter trained up here. Awesome. Let's move him from Town Hall to Lumber Mill. And we'll continue training up more statesmen in Ironhold. So apparently there's something I didn't notice in their orders. You can activate the unit. You can also wait for next unit. So Spacebar gives them no orders that ends their turn. They hit W for wait. That makes the unit wait temporarily, and then you come back to it later on during the turn in the sequence of units. So I'll probably be using a wait more often. It is still unfortunate that I can't hit spacebar and be like, okay, I don't want to do anything with this unit, and then wake it up later on if I change my mind. So the underlying issue of I don't want to do something with this unit, and then I change my mind, isn't fixed. So I'll probably just use wait for next unit, and I'll do that until I get to the end of the turn, and then I'll be like, okay. I definitely don't want to do anything else. And then I'll actually give the unit no orders. Actually, in Ironhold, I want to put the free colonists into the town hall, and then I don't want to use this carpenter to teach anymore, so I'll assign him to the lumber mill temporarily. Might want to move him elsewhere. I'll have to think about that. We'll move a elder statesman that was waiting outside Proxima up to Gunny to get them a higher bell income. I think I'm going to alter my setup in Safe Harbor. I can pull the fur trader out. Fur trapper, I mean. As a colonist, put in the farmer to produce a bunch of food off of the game tile. And we'll send the fur trapper elsewhere to build a new colony. Probably set up a lumberjack in Lumberton as well as a fur trapper here pretty soon. Lumberton will also need a farmer, that's true. We'll probably send this teacher farmer to build Lumberton. One of these carpenters I'm going to actually send from Ironhold over to Proxima because Proxima will be a pretty heavy industry area in terms of getting the shipyard and ships built as well as once we have Adam Smith we'll be building the tobacco factory and the weaving factory. I think that makes sense. We've got some mounted warriors here which means that they're strength 3. Let's see if we can take them down using our veteran dragoons. Yes we will attack them. So we do have the 50% bonus over them. That means that we have decent odds like maybe 66% chance of success. And we got them. Fantastic. Any more English dragoons to turn into members of our colony? We'll definitely bring them down. Robert here needs to come back because he has a bunch of cargo to bring us. We continue to get plenty of extra colonists from France, so we are growing quite rapidly. With the education of a proper carpenter in Proxima, I need to think what exactly I would like to do with the carpenters I have in Proxima, whether or not I need to spread them out or what exactly. I think I want to keep three in Proxima because we'll be making a lot of things here, so I'll probably keep these three carpenters just exactly where they're at. It's about time we started to get proper production on the prime tobacco and the prime cotton, so I need to move this farmer over. It's going to cost us a little bit of food per turn, but I think that is worth it. Unfortunately, I don't have anybody that's actually trained to properly make use of those tiles. However, using those tiles at all is going to significantly increase our ability to make cloth and cigars. Now I can pretty much sustain these two weavers for the most part working at the weaver shop. There's no particularly good way to assault this native village because all the tiles surrounding it are forested. We're just gonna have to hope that we burn it down in one attack of the whole army basically. Not one attack obviously, it's gonna take quite a few but we'll get it done. So we're gonna send in the non-veterans. Since we have six dragoons we should be able to take them down completely. They actually have some mounted braves here. Interesting. It's going to be a little bit harder to, to defeat them, but they still have no rifles, which means they have a hidden minus 50% negative. We hardened to veteran, and we took out the mounted warrior. Well, mounted brave. Send in another one. Yeah, they're still mounted. So I think this whole village has just been upgraded. The mounted warriors are probably over here to the west. They might be this village because they've been coming from the west. We actually lost that fight, unfortunately. It's okay, we got plenty more people. One more time, let's do it. Again, we lost. Wonderful. Come on, non-veterans, do your thing. Attack. 
bring them down. There we go. I'm gonna go ahead and hit them with the veterans just to make sure that we put down the village, or at least attempt to put them down. Having the mounted braves around is dangerous. We need to find that mounted warrior brave village as well. And the Iroquois, when we attacked, they were talking about there being war drums. So now most of the Iroquois should be hostile to us. So they should no longer try to warn us. We actually lost that fight. Holy crap. Yeah. We still have a couple of dragoons in the stack, so we should be okay in case we get attacked. There's a good chance that they will respond though. And we've got that elder statesman in Gunny, so we can add him to the town hall. We're going to need even more food production here to sustain the growing colony. A fair bit of that is eaten by the horse growth though. We're going to work on building Lumberton here pretty soon. We're not going to focus on lumber because we actually have enough lumber production in all of our colonies that it's not a big deal. Eventually we will make use of the timber tile though, as well as that timber tile. We've got enough artillery on hand that I think I can actually move a fur trapper over to this tile. And then we can finally found that colony as well. So this damaged artillery should be able to hold that colony pretty well. We have a damaged artillery here as well. That should be able to hold the colony there. And then once we take out this village and push up a little bit north of our army, we might be able to get Farmville built once more and start farming the surrounding area. We'll just see how things play out though, as well as our access to population. Hmm. We actually met the Arawak over by the Dutch island down south. And the Arawak can be quite dangerous. We got more taxes added, but it literally does not matter anymore. We just bypass all taxes using the custom house. As far as I know, I'm going to go ahead and just buy more expert ore miners to function as raw population and send them on back to the new world. And we've got a proper college built in Gunny. Very nice. We don't yet have anybody that can be trained. We just have the one free colonist left in Gunny, so it's not important right now, but it will come into greater importance later on. I think three universities is enough to fuel our empire, so I'm going to have artilleries get built in Gunny. At some point in time, we'll probably build a fortress. The chances of the king's forces attacking Gunny is low, but not impossible. So let's get that artillery started. We will of course build the tier 3 gun production building as soon as we have access to it in Gunny. And we got another statesman trained up in Ironhold. Very nice indeed. What shall we do with all these statesmen? I need to take a look at my other colonies to determine exactly what that will be. And we got Francis Drake, so now we get plus 50% privateer strength. Fantastic. There we go. So looking at my other colonies, I've determined that I should send that statesman over to Safe Harbor to become the third statesman at their town hall. Once we need more statesmen, we'll have plenty of them available in Ironhold, Proxima, and Safe Harbor waiting at the town hall to switch to the universities to train their free colonists that will go on to spread to our other colonies. This free colonist that was just born, we're going to have him go over to the prime tobacco tile and work that so that we can supply our cigar industry a lot better, making 11 tobacco per turn very nice. I've been having consistent issues with the weavers and the tobacconists not having anything to do because we don't have enough, say, cotton or tobacco on hand to justify having them work. So I've been doing things like moving them, not the farmers, moving the weavers into like the church temporarily unless I can get enough cotton or tobacco to have them do some actual labor. We have semi-decent odds with the soldiers so I think we're going to take that fight against the Iroquois village and now we're on a pretty even keel. They do have that hidden minus 50% though still. Yeah well, there we go we got him. Let's have one more attempt with a basic soldier to give him veterancy hopefully. Come on man you can pull it off. There we go good deal. We took care of both the natives over here as well as the village at the same time. And we got 700 gold worth of treasure. I'm going to have to bring back the army to re-equip my soldiers to become Dragoons. And then I'll have to consider what to do with them after that. My ore production is actually basically meeting the needs of my tool industry. So expanding ore production isn't hugely important at the moment. But we do always need more. We can finally rebuild Lumberton. So we're going to rebuild Lumberton for like what, the third or fourth time now? And we'll of course leave the fur trapper to do his thing trapping furs. We're going to need to develop the colony square, move in some food producers, and then build Lumberton higher, as well as move in a lumberjack and at least one carpenter. This fur trapper, we're actually going to move him northeast towards the tile just east of this deer, as well as the damaged artillery that should be okay to move up there. I don't think there's going to be any natives in the area. For our next founding father, let's think about what we'd like to pick. So Jean de Witt allows foreign trade of colonies. De La Salle gives all 
existing and future colonies that stockade when the colony reaches three. I don't care about that. That's actually counterproductive at times. Sometimes you want to build a colony and then just abandon the colony. And if the colony reaches three population, they get a stockade. And if you have a stockade, you cannot reduce the population below three. Therefore, you cannot abandon the colony at that point. Paul Revere makes it so that if a colony is attacked and it has no defenses, but it has muskets on hand, a colonist will take up arms to defend the colony. That's reasonable. Juan de Sepulveda increases the chance that subjugated Indians will convert. None of these are particularly good for our particular situation. It's theoretically possible that we might establish missions eventually and get converts, but I don't see it as very likely. Let's just go with Juan de Sepulveda, at least temporarily. Well, not temporarily. We have to continue researching him no matter what. But there are no other better options. We've got ourselves a proper shipyard now. Very nice. So now we can build any ship that we would like. Caravels, merchantmen, galleons, privateers, and frigates. All of which are quite expensive. Except, like, the caravel is pretty reasonable. And the merchantman is pretty reasonable as well. It's got almost the same price as an artillery. But it has double the price in terms of tools. In this case, I'm going to work on building more artilleries to establish more defenses for our future satellite colonies. And we got a lumberjack trained up as well as a farmer. So let's swap out the colonists to set them up properly. Lumberjack will go on to the conifer forest, which is great for lumber. And this farmer is going to get kicked out of the colony, I believe. If we're not, the mixed forest will make a great food production site eventually. However, we do need to get greater food income in our satellite colonies, so I'm going to go ahead and pull them out. Eventually, we'll turn this mixed forest into a food producing tile, but not yet. There could even be like a mega food producing tile underneath with like a wheat or something. I'm also going to pull the lumberjack and probably send him over to Lumberton in not too long. Both of these will probably go to Lumberton. This colonist is going to go into the lumber mill and begin getting trained as a carpenter. And I think we've almost reached a perfect distribution of land usage in Safe Harbor, other than making this a proper food producing tile. I think I'll switch the farmer and the fur trapper. We might keep the fur trapper exactly where he's at. So we'll pull him out temporarily, move the farmer over. That will reduce our food income significantly though. Once we build a road on this tile, it'll be better though. Put the fur trapper in, have him gather furs. We'll get both of these tiles roaded up in not too long in this tile cloud. I think this is a good setup for Safe Harbor. We've got ore income, we've got plenty of food. We've got a lumber income that is reasonable and some fur income to help sustain our coat industry. We want to move the pioneer that was around Gunny over to Lumberton to begin developing the colony square as well as probably connecting this tower right here. We've also got a pioneer with a full 100 tools prepared in iron hold. Him I think we're going to send up to this tower right here to develop a road connecting from the river to the colony and then develop the colony square as well as the surrounding tiles. There's a Iroquois mounted brave right there. We need to take him down if possible. So let's attack him. We got him. Very good. The Iroquois are probably going to send raiding parties to us pretty much constantly at this point. Which is entirely understandable. But again, they kind of started it. So I did nothing wrong. And our privateer is going to start sailing northeast and looking for some more victims. With that plus 50% strength for privateers, we're going to be a lot more capable at taking down potentially even a frigate. We got some more people from Europe to turn into fresh free colonists to train however we wish. We'll have to think about what we want to do with them. We're actually now producing more ore than we use. So I'm going to have these colonists get trained up to become... Oh, well, I can't move them this turn. I'll move them on the next turn over to Ironhold. And I'll start having the master blacksmiths train them to be blacksmiths. That way we can use up all the ore that we bring in every turn if possible. I could attack this English frigate sitting outside of Proxima, but it's not causing us any trouble at the moment. And it doesn't have any cargo on board, so there's no sense in attacking it and potentially damaging my frigate. Got ourselves another artillery built in iron hold. Let's see... No, we can't yet make a wagon train. Although I think I can found another colony and I might be able to make another one here in a second. So we'll leave that alone and we'll come back to it. And we'll build a colony right on this square. We'll call it... Let's call it Lake Erie. All of these satellite colonies will just be producing raw goods or we'll ship them into the primary colonies to actually manufacture them. And we got the treasure back, but they're going to take about half of it, so we might get maybe 350 gold. Yeah, 371. Not much, but it's something. 
There is a enemy English Dragoon here. I'm gonna move a veteran soldier onto this forest tile. See if I can force him to move onto the open terrain. So I have a better chance of bringing him down on the next turn. And in fact, I'll move down slightly further to make sure that he can't move on to defensive terrain. So his only option now, if he wants to stand around us, is to stand on this open plains tile. At which point we'll shoot him in the face. With the construction of Lake Erie, I'm going to move the three veteran Jagoons that are hanging out in Safe Harbor up to Lake Erie to be prepared for any English Jagoons that might want to screw around. And we got our first farmer ready to get set up in Lumberton, so we're going to set him up immediately. He's not going to make much food right away, but that's okay. We will develop the surrounding land. And that gives us enough food on hand to support the Lumberjack working the Timber Tile. So we'll set him up immediately as well, making a bunch of lumber. Like I said, I'm going to move the free colonists that just arrived over to Ironhold. I'm going to train them as blacksmiths. Alright, we've got them set up properly. That will temporarily reduce our tool production, but that's okay. And the artillery that we just built, I'm going to move that over to Safe Harbor to fortify there. I don't really need defensive artillery in my back. It'd be better to just station them in the front, but I don't think it makes much of a difference. Pretty soon we'll have plenty of artilleries anyway. And of course we've got more people to train up. we got to think about what we want to do with them. We need more carpenters, so I'm going to have one of them get trained as a carpenter. This is another new day of recording for me here, actually. And I'm recording this the day before the episode is going out, but I'll have it on time for you guys. Right now it's actually 8.52pm, uh, and my wife's asleep in the other room, so got to be very careful not to wake her up. We need some more lumberjacks. We're actually running at negative 26 lumber per turn, so I need to pull out a lumberjack into the university, put in a free colonist to work as a temporary lumberjack so that we can fix our lumber supplies. We actually have a few too many carpenters in comparison to our timber. Surprisingly enough, we haven't found any more victims over here in the east. We may have effectively killed much of the English shipping, and it'll take them some time to recover. Alternatively, some of the shipping might be down south, near where the Spanish used to live. Despite us burning down like four Iroquois villages, they're still warning us about overusing the lands near their settlements. They are, of course, not very happy, but uh, we are unconcerned. And that old criminal is now our proper farmer up in Gunny. Very nice indeed. With that done, I think we want to consider... Actually, we could maybe set him up as a farmer as well. We can have him farm temporarily in Gunny. We will be building Farmville eventually. We're also going to have to replace this ore miner with a proper lumberjack at some point in time. Actually, we should move him over one, I bet. No, it's the same output. Interesting. But yeah, he needs to get replaced with an actual lumberjack. And then we probably need one more food harvester here than Gunny. And the king continues to increase the size of his army, which is fine. We can grow faster than he can add troops. The English Dragoon actually uh, decided to leave and go north, which is very interesting. But we do need to take down this mounted warrior that has some actual rifles. So we're going to attack with our veteran Dragoon and hopefully wipe them out. So we will attack them, absolutely. We have the advantage, but it's not a huge advantage. So we got him. Good deal. We brought some horses up from Proxima to re-equip our veteran Jagoons with. So we're going to get them all set up. So we're at this particular moment, we're running with 12 veteran Jagoons. We have, I believe, three full non-damaged artilleries. And I think three damaged artilleries. There was actually a prime cotton underneath Lumberton that I was not anticipating. The Cherokee are attacking the Dutch, which I very much appreciate. It might be worthwhile moving Lumberton over by one. We got one de Sepulveda, and he increases the chance that subjugate Indians will convert. So we would want to establish a mission in a village that we're about to attack, and then attack the mission, and then we might get some converted natives from that mission. We did get a university built in Safe Harbor, and we also trained up a proper carpenter, so I'm going to pull the carpenter out of the university, put him into the lumber mill, and then I'm going to switch over to first a wagon train. Yeah, I need better logistics now that I'm starting to get more colonies. Currently we're producing six cotton from this tile. I don't think that goes up when we get... Well, it might also increase, so we're making six food on Proxima's tile. We would make four food in Lumberton. So I think when we get up to 100% revolutionary support, we'd have the same amount of income. 
but this free colonist produces 11 cotton, so it would be 9 cotton without the revolutionary support. If we plow this tile, this becomes 7 cotton. It might be better to move over by 1, but that does mean that we don't have access to this force. Alternatively, it does give us access to this other force, <laughs> so it works out actually. This is a broadleaf forest, which would be better for fur than, I believe, the mixed forest. Because a mixed forest, you'd want to cut down and turn into a plains to produce more food. Moving does require us to expend some more tools and, of course, time. However, I can very easily pull out right now. Well, the difference is only two cotton. Once we plow this field, we'll have seven cotton production in the city tile, compared to nine without revolutionary support, which is only two difference. I'm not sure that's worth losing a turn of production of lumber and furs. So I think we'll just go ahead and stay right where we're at. We have to send the pioneers back to Gunny and Ironhold to restock. We do have one more pioneer on Lake Erie that can continue working on Lake Erie, as well as one pioneer on Lumberton right here that should continue to be able to plow the fields and stuff. And of course, the English have decided to return once more to our neck of the woods with their moronic people. Which is fine, that supplies this population, so I'm quite happy to welcome them. I'm also quite happy to continue standing right on his spot, so that they want to get closer, they have to expose themselves. And we had another population growth in Proxima, which means I'd like to train up another lumberjack. So we'll pull that lumberjack out. This might cause some interference with the flow of lumber and the supply of hammers in some of our colonies, but it does only take four turns to train up a basic specialist, so it shouldn't be a problem. We have quite a lot of lumber stored up as well, and lumber supplies have become more stretched as I've assigned that colonist to be a carpenter. We're now losing 24 per turn to safe harbor, where we used to be pretty steady. I could take a shot at the English frigate for my privateer, because I would have times 1.5 times 1.5, like so 8 multiplied by those. That gives me a result of about 18 strength in comparison to the frigate's 16 strength. But if I'm going to do that, I really might as well just attack with my regular frigate. There's no caravels here to guard at the moment, and once again the English are continuing to harass me, so I think that it's completely justified in taking the fight to them and declaring that we don't have a peace treaty for a couple seconds. So we should have a pretty good chance of winning this, we might not, but chances are we will. Hey hey, we knocked him back to London, very nice. They can no longer sit around and annoy us. We'll just have to make sure to have a quick chat with them near the end of the turn. And just like that, we don't cut on piracy and we'll accept the peace treaty, why thank you. I wonder how common that tactic was back during the days of the early internet when people didn't communicate that much about tactics. Then you had to rely on strategy guides and things like that. There might be a decent chance that a strategy guide for this game included that. I'm actually up to 3,144 gold. It might be worthwhile buying a merchant man. I could try to build one, but I do want more artillery. There's a privateer skulking around Proxima. I gotta go sink that bastard. I don't need master fur traders or master weavers. I don't have enough supplies to supply either of these colonists. So I'd be better off just getting some free colonists. Recruiting more for immigration pools up to 760 gold, which doesn't make sense. So we're going to go ahead and just do some more ore miners. I don't need anything else on here. Everything else I can just drain. The only thing I don't have access to is a master distiller. But I don't have sugar, so there's no point bothering at the moment. And I'm really unsure about setting up any overseas colonies <laughs> of my own. So we'll go ahead and just take those guys as they are. And then, who are we going to go for next? So, Parker removes all boycotts. I don't care to remove any boycotts that we have. De La Salle gives all colonies a stockade. I don't want that. Revere is the take up arms guy. Rebroof might be an interesting choice. Taking Fugger does make it a little more likely to get Adam Smith, though. But Rebroof, we could maybe get some converts from the native villages that we're going to attack later on. Because he makes it so that all missionaries function as experts. So I could roll up with my army, establish a mission, and then attack them immediately. There is a, uh, a commentary that says that you do passively get converts, which I'd like to test. But I'd also like to ensure that I can get Adam Smith on the next go around. Because right now I think I have maybe three or four of the trade advisors. Which means I'd have about a 50-50 shot of getting Adam Smith on the next go. Yeah, I think increasing the odds of Adam Smith is just more important. So we're going to take Fucker, even though I don't really care about him. And we got ourselves another artillery and gunny, I'm very happy about that. 
we will soon start pushing north to establish our ore mining colonies up here. I probably won't establish a colony coastally, I might just establish it right here so that I can access the ore deposit right there and the hills right here. Proxima got artillery built as well, very good. And a wagon train at harbor, very nice indeed. Instead of purchasing a merchantman, I think I'd like to build one instead. Merchantmen have four cargo holds. This one will cost 192 hammers, which is the same as an artillery, which we can build pretty quick actually. It does cost twice as many tools as, as an artillery. Building a galleon would get us five cargo holds, but it's way, way more expensive, especially in terms of hammers. Building the merchantman saves us 2,000 gold as well. So let's build our first ship here in the colonies. Proxima will take care of that. We should not be able to build more wagon trains, so I need to swap off wagon trains and see if I can swap back. No, I cannot. So what is the alternative in safe harbor? Probably a stable. Alternatively, an army would allow us to start building artilleries in safe harbor eventually as well. But stables get us more horses, and horses are like our health pool, basically. Let's just build a stable for now. We'll build an artillery, I mean, an armory probably right after that. Gunny is going to continue knocking out their artilleries, there's no reason not to. I don't need another university. The college is perfectly acceptable in Gunny. The English veteran Jagoon left somewhere, probably to the northeast, leaving behind a non-veteran Jagoon standing in a forest. We have pretty good odds against that, so I'm going to take those odds and go have a little chat with him. We don't have a treaty, I don't know what you're talking about. Ah, uh, there's a veteran underneath him that I didn't see. Interesting. But we did route him anyway, very good. In that case, we'll continue to attack at full strength with everything we've got. Bring them down. Ah, uh, we were routed, oh well. Let's move down the northern dragoons and attack them, see if we can bring down the enemy. Got them, very good. All we have left is to bring down the non-veteran, which is going to be significantly easier to do. There we go, he's now a regular soldier. Now we hit him, make him a regular colonist, ideally. Nope. Alright, one more chance, let's do it. Come on. What the hell? There's more people here than I thought. There's like three dudes here. There's another soldier that's a veteran. That's fine, we can always buy more horses or grow more horses. And I need these people to join my colonies. Very good. Now they're down to just nothing but regular colonists without arms. So taking them down is going to be super easy. Just like that. We're actually going to get two veteran soldiers out of this conflict, as well as a colonist of some type. Ah, no, he had, uh, he either had Washington, and he got upgraded by that fight, or he just naturally upgraded anyway. So we got two veteran soldiers out of that conflict. No, we have a regular colonist right here. What is that supposed to be? I guess they lose their veterancy. Hmm. Anyway, that's enough of fighting the English for one turn. We'll just have a chat with them. And there we go. We did lose 150 horses in that fight, it looks like. Gotta possibly need to buy some more. The first extra artillery that we built in Proxima, I'm gonna send up north. That'll be one of the guardians of the northern ore mining colonies. Looks like what is probably an English privateer is up near Proxima. We'll hit them in the beginning of the turn. But now we have a proper lumberjack trained up. From the free colonists, we'll pull out the trainer lumberjack. We've also trained up another carpenter, so we'll pull out that carpenter as well. Send him somewhere else. But let's take a shot at sinking this privateer. Give it a shot. Come on. It actually has some cargo on it. Very nice indeed. So we're looking like we have 24 versus 6. Oh, 100 muskets. Very nice. And 100 tools. Very nice. From the English, no less. I wish that we could attack the Dutch some more, but I'm not sure where their shipping lanes are. They're probably much further south. Got ourselves another English Dragoon up north of Lake Erie. Let's go ahead and take him down if we can. Let's see if we roll well or not. We did route them to soldiers. Very good. Hopefully we'll route them down to a colonist right now. We lost, actually. Too bad. We got one more shot off a nearby Dragoon. Come on, come on. Got him down to colonist. Very good. Now question is whether or not I can reach them with a Chagoon. I believe I can. Yeah, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. We'll be fighting at one third strength. Let's give it a shot anyway. Mm, this is probably a terrible decision. The man can run one tile. Let him rest. I just need to keep in mind that he's probably going to retreat to this tile or this tile, then I'll just chase him down. There's a pretty good chance I would have lost that fight because we would have been at like even strength, roughly. Although he would have been at a slight disadvantage because he didn't have rifles. 
For these freshly captured free colonists, I think I'm going to train them to be farmers. So let's put them in the colony and start them training up farming. I want them to provide the food for the ore mining colonies. In La Rochelle, we're going to recruit some more ore miners. These we might actually keep. Thanks so much for watching Dylan with it. I had some minor issues with the microphone audio in this particular episode. Hopefully it'll be fixed in the future and I'll be able to continue to improve the microphone as I go along. I'm always trying to get rid of harsh sounds and to get the microphone to more accurately reflect my voice, which a lot of microphones struggle with doing because I have a pretty deep voice. Anyway, if you liked the video, leaving a like would really help the video to reach other people that might also enjoy the video. If you'd like to see more, you can always subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one in episode 13.